Do you want lights like this on your house? Of course you do. In 2017, I did this to my house. When I did it, I had to figure it all out for myself. Since then, I've been working on ways to make it a whole lot easier for anyone else who wants to do it. This is the 2022 Permatrack update video. You ready? Let's go. We're gonna go through the whole process, start to finish. How to get the track up, how to get the LEDs wired up, how to get the controller running, how to handle things like corners, power injection, and how to jump gaps. I said I would never do this again in July, and here we are again in July. Step one is to plan out where you want your lights. This house has a receptacle right here, so that's where we're gonna put the power supply and the controller. Then we're gonna run lights up those three peaks to the left and up the big peak and around the garage to the right. We're gonna to have to jump a few gaps. By gaps, I mean a space between strings of lights where all we wanna do is run wire. Anytime you have a gap that is more than about 10 feet long, you're gonna need a data booster so that your data signal gets to the other side of the gap intact. Now we need to take some measurements and figure out exactly how much track and lights we need. For jumping these gaps, we're gonna use three conductor wire. So we need to get an idea of how much of that we're gonna need. And then after you get past about 250 LEDs, it's a good idea to inject some power. That just means running an extra pair of wires from the power supply to that point in the LED string. In this house, we're gonna run power injection to this point and to this point. Okay, I think that's a pretty complete plan. Now we need to add up all that length so we know how much track we need, and then we're gonna to go to the Permatrack website and use the calculator to figure out how much of everything else we're gonna need. At permatrack.us, you scroll down, you'll find this little calculator. Put in there the feet that you measured of your roof line, and you're gonna get all this other information that tells you how much of everything you're gonna need, and even gives you a decent idea of what it's gonna cost. And to make it even just a little bit easier, if you scroll back up and click the bundle button, it'll take you to a page where you can buy all the stuff that you need all at once. For every box of track, you're gonna need one pixel pack. And then based on the calculator, you'll get an idea of the power supplies and the controllers that you need. Once you've got all your supplies, it's time to start putting it all together. Dawson here is popping in the pixels. So a couple things new about Permatrack our pixels are these square pixels instead of being the bullet shaped ones that makes it so you can have a lot more room in the track uh, we also have uh, shorter pieces of track the track is now 46 inches and there are 23 holes in each piece of track each string of leds when you buy the pixel pack from us each string of leds has exactly the number of leds to fit one length of track so by having dawson pop all these pixels into the track ahead of time all we have to do is take the track with the pixels up one time and pop it in. We don't have to worry about putting in the pixels while we're standing on a ladder or up on a boom or anything like that. All successful commercial products begin with child labor. <laughs> You'll also notice that this is not a typical color that we sell. Tyler just got white and then spray painted it a color that matches. If you buy a controller on the Permatrack website right now, this is what you get. It's a modified version of the Dig Quad with the external antenna uh, controller on top. This thing comes off, that's okay. Everybody freaks out when that comes off, it's not a problem. These pins aren't used, that's just there to stop those pins from contacting anything else. What we're gonna do is put positive in here and negative in here from our power supply. The data comes out here. We've got four different data outputs. We're gonna use two of them on this project. So we'll use this one and we'll use the one next to it. And then this is how we power the LEDs. This is the negatives. These are the positives. And we have multiples of these so that we can have different power injection points. And most importantly about that is we can have them run off of different fuses. These two screws, if you connect wires to these two, they're protected by this fuse here. These two, are connected by this fuse here. This one goes to this fuse, this one goes to this fuse, this one goes to this fuse. So when possible, it's a good idea to have your power injection lines coming from different fuses. Okay, so we'll use this one, and then we'll skip over to this one, and if we needed more, we would go down here like that. We're gonna do the smart thing, which is wire up the controller in a test rig on the ground so that we can test every one of these 
uh, strings of LEDs before we put them up on the roof. Because what you don't want to do is put them all up, turn them on, and not have anything work because that's about as frustrating a thing as you could possibly run into. Okay, so the test rig is wired up. We've got our 12 volt power supply. We've got a positive and negative coming from the positive and negative here. Goes to the positive and negative on the input side of the controller. Uh, I hooked up the antenna. And then on the output side, I put one of these so that we could easily connect and disconnect uh, a string. You can also take just the last bit of one of these strings and cut that last connector off. You know you're not gonna use the one on the very last uh, string that you've got, so you can certainly cut one of these off on that end. So the output wiring, negative here, positive here, and then we're on the first channel coming off of the controller here, okay? So then when we plug this in, They're gonna come on green first because right now it thinks that it's WS2812 lights and these are 2811s. Most of the pixels that you're ever gonna see are gonna be 11s. That's just a setting that will change in the controller so that they turn out the right color. But this shows us that these pixels are working. So I can now take this off and I can pick up one of these tracks that the boys are putting together here. Plug it in here. And there's my pixels, all lit up green. So I know they're working, so that's great. I'm gonna set this so that it does an effect, so that we can see it do an effect when we're doing the tests. When you first power up the controller, it creates a Wi-Fi network called WLED-AP. So go to your phone, connect to that network. The password is WLED1234. When you connect to it, it should automatically take you to this loading page. First thing to do for us is to go to the controls and then config and then LED preferences. First, we're gonna change the voltage to tell WLED that we're using 12 volt lights. Then we're gonna change the RGB color order so our lights are gonna be yellow instead of green. After making the changes, scroll to the bottom and hit save. Now we'll go back and select an effect. I'm gonna just pick color waves. If you hit the peak button, it will show you a preview of what the lights are doing. Then when I plug it in, I can see if the lights are doing what they should be doing. And in this case, they are. Success. For this house, we've got some pretty tall peaks. So wisely, we rented a lift rather than try and get up on the ladder up there. All right, we're up here enjoying the view. So our controller box is gonna be down there. So we want our data start point to point to be aimed that way. So that's the side of the connector that goes towards the controller. So when we put this up here, we want that connector pointing towards the controller. The other thing we need to take care of is these extra wires right here. We're just gonna clip those so that they're not exposed. Uh, we could connect them here, but it doesn't gain you a whole lot. They're really for power injection and we're not gonna power inject right at this point. So we're just gonna clip those wires so that there's no exposed wire and that'll be fine. There are two ways to mount the track, and I'll show you both. The track comes with these mounting brackets. You can use some self-tapping sheet metal screws and just screw those mounting brackets up into your soffit. And then you just clip the track into the mounting brackets. I find it easiest to put the back side in first and then just squeeze or push the front side and it will clip into the mounting bracket. You can also mount these without the brackets. The thing to do, assuming you have soffit like this, is loosen these soffit screws so that this piece has a little bit of flex behind it. So I've loosened a couple of those. And then I tuck the track up behind it. So tuck the track up behind that edge of the soffit. Okay. Then you can tighten this front side. And then with your self-tapping screws, lock up the back side. is just about as good. You can put as many screws in there as you want. 
Okay, we gotta splice in some power injection wires. So these are power injection wires, and we're gonna splice them in here. And we're gonna use these, I don't know what else you call them, I'd say side biter kind of connectors. In this case, we're splicing the positive with the positive. So this goes in the open side there. This goes in that side, push it down. And then if you push down this metal piece here, pliers would be better, but we use what we got. So push that metal piece down in there. And that makes a connection between both wires. I don't cut my finger off. Okay. And then this folds over the top. But you can see that it went through. So it connected to both of those wires. Okay. And then we'll wrap that up with some electrical tape. So it's got a little bit of a sealant. Heat shrink tape would be better. But that's not what we got. Okay. We're about to jump this gap from this edge of this roof down to that spot there. So clearly more than 10 feet. So in order to not lose the integrity of the signal, we're gonna put in this little booster board and we put it in at the end of this string. The data is coming this way. Now it's gonna to get to this data booster. It's gonna get plenty of voltage and it's gonna go through these wires and down to where we have uh, a strip of LEDs down there. But this is how you wire it up, pretty simple. There's a positive, negative and data and the arrow on the board here points the direction that you of the data, the direction the data is going to go. So it points the direction the data is going to go. The data is the white, goes this way. Oh, there's also this little switch. Uh, with this kind of wire where the three are bundled together, put that on 33. That's on 249. That's on 33. We want it on 33. Plastered it with electrical tape. It's probably not the best solution, but inside the channel, under the lip of the roof, uh, it should be fine. Heat shrink tubing would definitely be better. All right, so we're splicing on some of this PVC covered wire so we can have it exposed out to the sun. We're gonna use these soldery melty connectors. And in this case, black we already did, black goes to blue. With this wire, yellow is the data and white is the data over here. So you take one of these, slide it on here. Then take these two wires, kind of twist them together so that they're uh, kind of lengthwise so that they don't really pooch out. They don't stick out a lot. Okay, so you do like that. Slide this back over until that's in the middle. So the solder's in the middle. And then you're going to have to have some sort of a hot air gun. You can just use a hair dryer too. I like to do the glue sides first. So you, you heat up this part and it glues it down. And then you heat the solder in the middle. And once you see that solder start to run, it turns shiny and you can see it usually flow past the wires like that, then you're done. You can stop. And that will be waterproof and about as good a connection as you're ever going to get between two wires. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? What do you mean? I'm just doing this together. All right, this is wired up. We've got two data wires. We've got three negatives and three positives. The extra negative and positive are voltage injection. So this one and over here, we're using the same cable. We're just not using that yellow wire. A lot of people ask about how to make corners. The easiest thing to do is just cut the track with some tin snips. I got a sample piece of track here. If I want to make a horizontal 90 degree corner, I just trace out something that's 90 degrees, like the corner of a sheet of paper. And then get the tin snips and just cut out that section. And then bend it into a 90 degree angle. To make a vertical bend, draw a line where you want the bend to be. Make your best guess at the angle of your roof and trace a couple lines on the side of the track and you're gonna cut out that chunk on both sides and then bend it on your original line. Now, if you wanna be even fancier and you have a 3D printer, our good buddy Bob here designed a bunch of corners at different angles and posted them on Thingiverse for anybody out there who wants to use them. Thanks, Bob. There's also another file here for end caps. If you don't have a 3D printer 
or you just want to pay somebody else to print them, check out SFL Designs. You don't actually need to do either of those things. We just butt the corners together, and when you're 30 feet away, looking up from the ground, you can't even tell. But I know some people like to really make nice corners, so now you got a couple good options. Just a couple more things to do before we're done. We're going to go back into the WLED app, back into LED preferences, and we need to tell the controller exactly how many LEDs we have. Best practice is to actually count them. I'm just going to kind of guesstimate and say there's 750. Next we need to change the maximum current. I like to use something above the number that WLED calculates as enough. So for this one, I'll use 4,000. Now we scroll down to the LED outputs, and on LED output number one, that string starts at LED zero, and there are 450 LEDs on that data channel. Then when we go to hardware output number two, we change the color order like we already did for output number one when we had our test rig set up. To get our LED count right, we start where the other one ended. So we start at 450, and there are 300 LEDs in that data channel. And then, because we have our controller in the middle, and we have data traveling in two directions, one going to the right, one going to the left, if we want an effect to take, say, one LED starting at the left-hand corner of the house and going all the way across the house continuously to the far right side of the house. In order for that to happen, we need to reverse one of these two data lines. So I'll pick number two and we'll reverse that one. Then we can save and the last thing that we'll do is connect it to our Wi-Fi network. So go to Wi-Fi setup, put in the name and password for your Wi-Fi network. Then click Save and Connect. Assuming you got the name and password right, it will now connect to your home network. Then the WLED access point will disappear. And to find your new device, you go to the WLED app, hit the plus, and then Discover Lights, then the check mark. And when you go back here, you should have a new WLED device. You can click on the device right here to access the controls, or take the IP address and put it into any browser on any machine that is connected to your network and you'll be able to access the controls for this LED controller. Well that's it. I hope that was helpful to you. I'm sure I haven't answered all the questions you might have, but I have lots of other videos that answer a lot of those questions. And there's a growing community of people who have done this for themselves and are willing and able to share what they've learned. If you want to chat with me or others who enjoy projects like this, Check us out on Facebook and Discord. And as if that wasn't enough, I do live streams on YouTube and Twitch every Sunday morning. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.